Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Today's video features true horrifying winter stories to meet all of your horror needs. Remember, all of these stories that I will narrate today were submitted by viewers just like yourselves. So make sure you email your true scary stories too. The sinful savant at gmail.com. I will leave a link to my email in the description box below as well. So check that out at the end of the video. Sit back, relax, stay sinful. Story number one. My wife and I traveled to the small quaint town of Leavenworth, Washington for Christmas in 2017. Leavenworth is a Bavarian-styled village in the Cascade Mountains in central Washington state. Alpine-style buildings with restaurants serving German beer and food line Front Street. This town is magical with all the Christmas decor and snow-covered grounds. Anyway, my wife and I were staying for a full week over the Christmas holiday that year. We rented a nice suite in a local hotel and were very, very comfortable. Our first day there, we unpacked and got settled in around 5 p.m. The town was full of tourists doing the same thing we were. The snow was starting to fall very heavily as we walked the Christmas-lit streets to find a place to dine. We ended up eating at a very nice German-style bistro. As we finished up our meal, our server brought us our check and asked for payment. As I was pulling out my debit card to pay, I look up and end up locking eyes with a woman sitting across the room from us. I smile to be polite and look away and think nothing of it. My wife hands me my coat and we make our way out of the restaurant. We decide to go for a stroll and enjoy the fresh snowfall. We make it two blocks down the street and my wife notices something strange. One of the buildings has a narrow passageway between the buildings right next to it. My wife whispers to me that a woman was staring at her partially hidden behind the building. It was like she was peeking out barely to be seen. I glance back as carefully as possible to not be noticed. I grab my wife's arm and told her, that is the same woman who stared at me at the restaurant. The woman quickly disappeared into the darkness. Very creepy, but we continued on our walk and it quickly faded from the forefront of our minds. We make our way back towards our hotel, and as we cross a large, darkly lit parking lot, we notice a small group of people walking towards us. Our senses begin to heighten as we sense something very bad is about to happen. I tell my wife that we need to go the opposite way back to a more populated area. As we turn to start fast walking away, I look back and notice these people are sprinting towards us. My wife screams at me to run faster. It is so difficult to run with all the snow on the ground. As we round the corner, I slip and take a nasty fall. My head starts spinning and I look up to see my wife at my side and us surrounded by five people in hoodies pulled down past their eyes. I see the woman who was staring at me at the end of our meal. I lose consciousness and wake up in the local ER. Thankfully, my wife is there with me unharmed. Apparently, a large group of college kids made their way down the same street while the group surrounded us. The hooded strangers decided against whatever their plan was and fled. I'm not religious, but after that experience, I feel like some sort of divine intervention took place that night to keep us from harm. Happy holidays, everyone, and thanks for the platform to share my story, Sinful. Story number two. The night is cold and they say it will snow soon. Can you imagine being homeless, having to move all night and try to sleep during the day? The wind is blowing, making my face burn from the cold. There is no imagination needed for me. I am homeless. My name is Joe. I was a successful man with a good job. Then my world changed and now I live in fear for my next meal. It is a black night with little moon so it's very hard to see. I must find food down by the restaurant in the dumpsters. 
I live in a small group that trusts one another so we guard each other's possessions. Tonight the burn barrel is on fire and I'm watching the smoke rise upward blowing in the night wind. It had just started to snow large white flakes, just falling, covering the ugliness of the streets. There is a strange man who has wandered into our camp. He has a medium build with long brown hair, wearing glasses. One week ago, the cops told us homeless to be very careful as there is a group of men abducting homeless people. They found a guy I know in the alley covered in blood and his insides had been ripped out. They kidnap homeless people and sell their organs on the black market. Now, this is a horrible thing to think about, as if fighting off crazy people all day isn't enough. We all took this very seriously. Some groups moved closer to other groups as well. One week passed and no one else went missing, so the stress reduced a bit in our community. I was walking uptown when out of the blue I was witnessing the abduction of a man. It happened right in front of my eyes, right around the corner. My bones were shaking from the bitter cold. The shock of watching them pull another homeless person into a vehicle made me physically sick. It looked like they put a cloth over his face and then his body went limp. They put him in the trunk, so I decided to follow the car. I grabbed Henry's bike and set off in pursuit. It was amazing they did not travel too far from where they grabbed him. They stopped at a warehouse about a mile down the road. I knew I couldn't go inside alone. I had horrible visions of what they might be doing to him. I then thought, if I get caught they will gut me too. I waited for hours, and then a truck came out marked San Carlos Hospital. They must have harvested his organs and then dumped the bodies. I watched them drive out of the neighborhood, and at that moment I felt cold and empty thinking no one will even miss that poor man. Suddenly another homeless person came up to me. He asked if I had just witnessed that as well. He sat down beside me dirty and smelling horribly. He said, You could be next, Joe. I thought, how does this man know my name? Was this homeless person part of this? If so, I believe I may have seen too much. My heart raced and pounded in my chest. Who was this person? Will I make it through the night? He started to hand me something, but I was too afraid to look. Was it a heart or liver? By this time I had gone into full scale fight or flight mode. I figured that I better take what he gave me, just to be safe. I looked down to see his FBI badge all shiny and new. He also handed me his ID. His name was Sergeant Ivy. I was so relieved in that moment. You have no idea. There is evil in the night when you are homeless. The snow and cold living on the streets is bitter. Thank you, but I think I'll keep my organs. <laughs> Story number three. I have been fortunate to own property along the Lewis River in Dole Valley in Washington State. This area has mountains with rivers and streams all throughout it. My family and I live down below near the river's edge. I have hiked all of these beautiful trails for years and know them like the back of my hand. Being someone who loves the outdoors, I have run into bears, deer, rabbits, cougars, and other human beings throughout the woods. My grandfather taught me to hear and identify the noises in the wilderness, especially at night. That's when the woods come alive. Once a month I take my 4x4 up the mountain roads to check entry gates and for settlers. Yes, settlers. People who are hiding from society in the high mountains and caves. They have removed themselves from societies to hide out and live off the grid. The weather had turned to new snow falling, and I knew I wouldn't have access to the roads if I waited any longer. When I make these rides, I have my German Shepherd with me. Hank is a large and very loyal dog. He was a former canine pooch that I adopted after he retired from the force. 
I had been driving up the logging roads for about two hours with no sign of any trespassing. It is so peaceful deep in the mountains, especially when it's snowing. Up over the next rise in the road stood a man half-dressed. He was six foot four and nearly 300 pounds. I asked him, Hey man, do you know you're on a private property? The guy stood there with a blank look on his face. I asked him what he was doing up there so far off the grid. Just then another man came out of the brush. They both had such horribly blank looks on their faces. I shouted, okay, say something, who are you? Identify yourself. The first man reached behind him and pulled out a large knife. I always stand near my jeep when I run into a potential troubling situation. Hank started to growl in a low, steady rumble. Hank didn't like the situation and neither did I. With my right hand, I reached into the jeep and pulled out my 12-gauge shotgun, told them to stop walking towards me. I told Hank, get in. That signaled Hank back into the jeep. I shouted at the man, told him to be off this land before the week was over. If I had not had my shotgun, my life may have been over. Hank always knows when we pass hikers, who he likes, or who may be of evil intent. I called the local sheriff deputy, and he said they would ride back up the logging road with me in a week to check it out. The woods are beautiful but can hide ugliness, dangers of many kinds. Both men and animals can end your life at any moment. Nighttime in the mountains is so dark, so far away from electricity, without a moon shining, impossible to move. That last story was actually submitted by my mother. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for future content. Email all of your true scary stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com. I want to thank everyone who watches my videos weekly. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys send my way in the comments section. Till we meet again, stay sinful.